very large tick, yeah, that is the Gulf Coast tick. You know, it rises up onto blades of grass and low shrubs and bushes. And as our pets go by, or even us, we go by, it's gonna latch onto us, move through the hair coat very, very rapidly, and then initiate feeding. Um, and the problem we have then is that you know, it can cause you know, great problems to these animals because of its aggressive nature. Most of us think about the Gulf Coast tick. You think about the Gulf Coast United States. Well, quite frankly, what's happened is this tick, contrary to its name, is actually moved northward up along the East Coast and certainly through the central part of the United States, well up into Kansas, Missouri, even up into southern uh, Ohio now. So this tick has made a drastic northward expansion. So, you know, historically, you know, we've got enough ticks out there that we have to worry about. Now we've got another one that we have to worry about. That's why this tick matters so much, is that we've got another tick now that can be found on our pets in our own backyard. The disease we're really concerned about with this tick is called American canine hepatozoonosis. Uh, this is a severe, debilitating muscle disease of dogs. Um, in fact, if dogs can get it, they actually may have it the rest of their lives and really cause great uh, disease and debilitation. Well, with most ticks, uh, the diseases are transmitted through the saliva of the tick as it's feeding. But with the Gulf Coast tick, that's not what's happening. Uh, it's kind of unique in the fact that the only way that the disease is transmitted in the disease we're talking about is American canine hepatozoonosis, is the dog actually has to eat the tick. You know, not the tick eating the dog, it's the dog eating the tick. Um, and when that dog grooms itself and pulls that tick off, that's how that disease is transmitted. You know, since the Gulf Coast tick hasn't historically been found in a lot of those areas and along the East Coast and the central part of the United States, a lot of practitioners are not gonna be aware of this disease. One of the good places you can go for good information is the Companion Animal Parasite Council website, CAPSI, as most of us know it. In fact, there's a really great page on CAPSI about American canine hepatozoonosis. In fact, there's great color pictures in there of the muscle disease, uh, talking about diagnosis, and also there's a great section on treatment. You know, one of the things I talk to practitioners about is that, you know, there's often new diseases coming into, into their practices as we see, you know, as we say before, particularly with ticks. I mean, there's more ticks in more places today, which means more tick transmitted disease. Uh, we also have a lot of other parasitic diseases that you know, maybe we're not as familiar with as we used to be. And that's one of the reasons why the Companion Animal Parasite Council was really formed, to provide a reference, a resource uh, for that information for practitioners.